Just like that, uh, the host of uh, the Overman Show on ESPN2, Keith Overman, joins us right now live on our Village Inn hotline to begin the show. And I didn't realize uh, you were such a dog lover until last night, Keith. Yeah, no, I, I, it's, uh, I, I'm a recent convert. I, I, got, uh, I got my first dog uh, about two years ago, and have thus, you know, like, like all um, converts, I'm the, I'm the top zealot. So, yeah, I'm a big dog guy. Well, and now you have a jersey to add to your collection that will probably go down as one of the wildest minor league baseball jerseys uh, you'll ever see. Yeah, you know what? I, I just uh, I walked my my older dog about an hour ago wearing um, the Chihuahua's Bark in the Park Night shirt, and uh, my dog gets a lot of attention to begin with, but the um, the shirt added something to the experience. And I was just thinking as people were like pointing and looking at it and you know, smiling at the idea of this giant face of a, you know, blown up from these small chihuahua. I mean, there's no chihuahua this size. If there were a chihuahua this size, it would be a chupacabra or something. I mean, it's just it's a huge, it becomes a huge face on somebody who's six feet four. So uh, I'm just just thinking, though, if, if, you, if, if, the, if the team wanted to make a good deal of money, maybe some of it for charity, I think this should be the shirt. I think the regular uniform should be eliminated, and this should be it, because they would sell more than any other minor league team. I have no question of it, and probably more than many major league teams, because people who have no interest whatsoever in the sport would want to get one of these shirts. Dog lovers everywhere would want to get one of these shirts. We're talking to Keith Olbermann here as we begin Sports Talk on a Thursday afternoon. Um, you were able to pull some strings and get one before the game on Sunday when the team uh, debuts mm -hmm. and, and auctions them off. Just out of curiosity, I, I know you've got big-time media pull, so you could pull some strings and get it, but did you request uh, number 33? Uh, how did you how did you get that number? It was the one that was in the box. <laughs> I opened the box yesterday. I said, great, 33, and I will confess to you, I don't know who 33 is. Who is 33? I think you're 33. Oh, I'm 33 now? Okay. Yeah. It's a, it's a good number. Um, I, I have to, the, the process by which I got this is a lot simpler than it sounds. We have twice uh, shown um, the, the uh, Jeff Francoeur uh, series. It would have been a trilogy, but most of them getting called back up to the Padres, I guess. Uh, the Fellini of the Pacific Coast League, Cody Decker, only gets to make two films at this point. And so I, uh, when I heard about this, because as a dog lover and as uh, just a, as a uniform collector and such, I, I got a hold of Decker and I said, you, if, can you find out about where I can get one of these? Because obviously I can't make the auction. Could you find out where I can get one of these? And he said, I'll ask the general manager. And the next thing I knew, he was saying, where should we send it? I said, look, if you send it in advance, I can, you know, give you 20 seconds or 30 seconds on the show, get you a little publicity for the, for the auction since it's for charity. And, uh, that's, and then it showed up. So this is, once again, Cody Decker, uh, you know, slugger, filmmaker, and part-time member of the promotions department of the team. I love it. By the way, we're huge Cody Decker fans. I wouldn't be surprised if he if he joins your staff during the off season with his uh, with his film aspirations. And I do understand that he will be making an appearance uh, with you uh, during the off season. In fact, yeah, we, uh, it, it's going to be sooner than that. We're going to, I think he's supposed to come on next week. We haven't firmed this one up, and obviously it's based on the schedule. But if there's an off night somewhere, we think we can do it. Um, obviously, we can do it remotely. He doesn't have to come to New York or anything. But we, we're intending to have him on at some point. And I think the, you know, the process of, of ironing it out is still being uh, finalized. But, uh, yeah, we're, uh, this is, he is one of the, um, he is one of the guys who's in the sport who sees the big picture, who has a view of baseball as not just, you know, the game on the field, but also how to promote it and uh, in, in the process have fun with it and, and also promote himself a little bit. But, uh, I, you know, I think he's got, uh, he's got, we're not sure what kind of future it's going to be in the game. I think he's got a future in the game. I wouldn't disagree with that at all. By the way, August 6th is their next day off. That's uh, next Wednesday. So that, yeah, that, could be it. that could end up being the day you see uh, Cody Decker uh, with you uh, on the uh, Overman Show as we continue here with, with Keith Overman on the program. All right. Uh, you. By the way, you have been tracking this team, I know, the last uh, few months, especially when they debuted Chico as the mascot. Uh, we were told that uh, that uh, you know got some attention uh, from your staff. Yeah, no, we uh, – it's – 
again, I, I said the the other day that this is the best publicized team in minor league baseball, and I and 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 I didn't mean that to sound. If it sounded kind of snarky or complainy, I didn't mean it to be that way. It, it, it best publicized, meaning both in terms of volume of publicity and well done publicity, because there's just you know you hear things again and again from minor league teams who are trying to get attention and trot out a different uniform every three weeks or something else. But here's a you know this is this is okay. It's a cute name, and yeah, okay, I, we get why, and oh, okay, it's well, it's it, it's novel, it's original. And then you see the, the, the you know the, the interesting guys on the team. Um, uh, uh, an approach to, uh, I mean, this it sounds a little stupid to talk about Chihuahua's heritage night, but you know, essentially, you are saying we're more than just a name here. We're going to do something for the Humane Society, and you know, maybe the next step step is to do something for uh, um, the the other kind of shelters that don't don't do the things necessarily that have to be done at the Humane Society. But I mean, it's just it just it's nicely done, and it seems to be. It seems to be that, that that thing that is so lacking in sports, particularly when it comes to promotion, uh, sincerity, which is a nice, <laughs> it's a nice non-negative thing to to sort of latch onto. So as long as they keep you know coming up with um, interesting and sincere ideas, we'll give them all the airtime that uh, that we can provide. Keith, before I brought you on, we we played the clip of uh, the price trade uh, today to Detroit. I don't recall, and you might have a better uh, idea than, than me, the last time there were uh, so many deals involving some pretty big names at the deadline. Yeah, well, I'm just thinking the Manny Ramirez uh, 2008 week, there was a whole bunch that, that happened in sequence. And then, you know, you just you can go back and say, well, look, the Randy Johnson trade when he went to Houston before he then became a free agent, went to Arizona in the in the nineties. That was ninety eight. That was a particularly big stretch because there'd already been uh, you know, Piazza trades and all the rest of that. So there, I mean, you, you, you do get things down again that that kind of recede into the distance, and, and everybody sees the, the the current game much more easily than they do the game of ten or fifteen or even twenty years ago. But you know, this is this is top five. There's no question about it, and the ramifications of it. Are are you know spectacular, and the idea that you know uh, the the A's would would having traded for Samarja and uh, and Hamill from the Cubs, saying no, we we need to get Lester as well. While the the Tigers, I mean, I think it's great that I mean, it helps the Tigers that they got David Price, but I think they I don't think they address their needs, and their, their needs are not starting pitching. I think they're going to be fine in the playoffs. With starting pitching, it's other things. But for the A's who are willing to give up Cespedes to get Lester on what might be a rental, suggests you know some some sense that they want to be invincible in the playoffs. So it's that, those two trades alone, to say nothing of the uh, of the lackey deal with St. Louis, those are some pretty big pretty big people involved in it. That's it's pretty impressive stuff. And I was going to say, if you're a Red Sox fan, you've totally found a way to try and, and rebuild your organization uh, with, in a matter of uh, you know two to three trades. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I like the uh, I, I like the trade of Lackey. Uh, he did a good job for them, but I think to get particularly Joe Kelly, who has shown flashes of brilliance not this season, but looked um, you know for, uh, like a first class pitcher in the playoffs last year. I like that trade in particular. And then you know, all of a sudden, well, who's the who's the identity of the Red Sox beyond David Ortiz? To say nothing of who was the power hitter of the Red Sox beyond David Ortiz, they didn't have one. And to be able to turn Lester, who was potentially a walk away, into an asset like Cespedes is a is a great trade. So that that worked out very well for them. And uh, you know, it, it's it, 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 there is very little chance that it's going to make any difference for them this season. Although the American League East has been so uniformly bad, but I would not write anybody off. It's still tech, if it's technically possible, it is practically possible in the American League East or almost any of the divisions this year. But they are clearly, you know, they clearly had a plan, and they clearly had some opportunities to improve, and they took and they took advantage of both. Give our listeners, if you could, a, a little preview of the show tonight and what you have coming up. We have uh, we will be analyzing this entire uh, entire day, obviously, with the uh, with, with the trade deadline, and uh, and I'm going to go through the Ray Rice news conference today, which I know a lot of people sort of saw it as an apology, but I, I'll give you a brief. A brief synopsis of the commentary. He eight different times in this in this press conference, Ray Rice said he was going to own uh, what happened, or whatever happened with his wife, and not once did he mention what it was 
that happened with his wife, and he certainly didn't give any details of what actually happened, the parts we have not seen. And it seems to me if you're, if you're going to own something, you have to own up to it first. He didn't do that, so I'm going to be analyzing that. And then we have the usual highlights. Uh, worst Persons in the World has um, a particularly bizarre series of photographs of a Japanese uh, sumo wrestling team. I don't know if you've seen these online. There's a whole bunch of them. Most people have seen one. These giant guys in a tiny, 29 of them in a tiny prop plane. Basically, you know, there's no space. There's just these guys sitting there, and we have a whole, I'm, I have a whole story that goes with, uh, with why these guys are traveling and why the, why the uh, proprietors of the, the company that employs them would humiliate them by tweeting out these photos of them in this tiny space. Very nice. Uh, by the way, uh, how much fun are you having back in sports, getting a chance to do it your way by uh, putting this show together every night? Well, it's a great deal of fun, Steve. You, you, you hit the right word for it. I mean, on top of everything else, um, I, I uh, the, the nine or ten years that I spent doing almost nothing but news and politics, I'm, I, I own those, and I'm, I'm proud of those. Having said that, to me, what I did there, and, and from a personal level, what I did there was a great deal of fun and very valuable, but it's like I spent those, that time in a different country. And, you know, you can go to France, and if you speak French and succeed in, in, the, in, in and enjoy the life there, that's great. When you come home and you're speaking English again, you find out, again, how much faster and how much easier it is to, to think in your native language. And sports is my native language. You made my day 21 years ago when I interviewed you as a sophomore at the University of Texas on a 45-minute-to-an-hour baseball preview on a FM cable radio show we taped that day. And I can't thank you enough for uh, all these years later getting a chance to lead off and, uh, wouldn't you know it, talking about the El Paso Chihuahuas AAA baseball team. You're very welcome, Steve. Take care of yourself, Keith. You too.